So you can use a jeweler's loop to actually observe the grains under magnification to see the different kinds of embossing that has been done. And it's super cool. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. So I'm really excited about this video. It was one that was fairly heavily requested when I recently unboxed my latest YSL clutch. When I mentioned that I'd be interested in doing a comparison between YSL pebble leather or grain de poudre leather, coach pebble leather, and Chanel pebble leather, Chanel caviar. Now I got a lot of people interested in this sort of video and I was super excited to do it, which is why it is coming out as soon as now. And I hope that this will actually be the start of a little mini series because I'm interested in doing so many videos about different leathers. I actually have quite a few ideas. I'd love to do a video about like coach leather, comparing coach leather throughout the years from vintage coach leather to current modern coach leather and tell you a couple of the key differences. I also really want to do an in-depth comparison of Chanel caviar and Chanel lambskin. And I don't mean just caviar is more durable, lambskin scratches. I mean like actually in depth. I mean about the tanning process. I mean about the different types of hides that are picked. I mean the different places the leather is sourced from. I mean like in depth. So let me know if you are interested in that video. I think I'm probably gonna make it anyway because I am, as we know by now, a leather nerd. But if you're interested in that video or you have an idea of what you'd like me to make, please again, leave a comment down below. Anyway, I digress. This video is going to be about comparing three different types of pebble leather. We have YSL, we have Coach, and we have Chanel. And we have a couple of different types of caviar leather from Chanel and also from ugh, YSL that we are going to compare because different leathers or different bags are different. And for instance, this is a YSL SLG and this is a YSL Mini Lou camera bag. And they are made differently with slightly different techniques and the grains are different. And so I'm not gonna get too super, super in depth because this is a comparison between three different brands. And like, if I compared Coach Leather and I have like, this is my Coach Cassie, which is my most modern Coach bag in pebble leather. But I could also compare this pebble leather to like the Coach Rogue that I have, the second generation Coach Rogue that I have that came out a little bit earlier than that. Or I compared it to like an outlet bag and that would be another video and a half. So we're just doing a base comparison between Grain de Poudre from YSL, Coach Base Pebble Leather, and Chanel Pebble Leather. And I have also two different types of Chanel caviar. I have a soft caviar from my Sweet Classic Flap and a classic caviar from my Wallet on Chain. I'm gonna get into it as much as I possibly can, but I don't want this video to be a million hours long either. So if there's anything that you want more detail about, like comparing the different caviar leathers, I can also do that for Chanel in a later video, I have a lot of ideas. Can you tell I'm really excited? Because I'm really excited. So first to start, what is pebble leather? Well, there are two different types of pebble leather. There is natural pebble leather, and then there is embossed pebble leather. All the brands I'm talking about today have embossing pebble leather. Natural pebble leather is pebble leather that is the top grain or the full grain cut of leather from the original hide of the animal. The hair or the fur is removed. And then the leather itself is tumbled, usually in a machine, like a round drum, in a way that accentuates the natural pebble of the leather. An example of this is Hermes Togo and Hermes Clemence leather. Togo and Clemence leather by Hermes are both tumbled natural leathers. And that's why you'll sometimes see different grainings in the Togo leather or the Clemence. You'll see different veins. And that's because the animal hide that was used had those marks in it and it just occurred naturally in the animal skin. And it was transferred into the leather bag or the leather item because they didn't alter the animal skin in any way, shape or form. The other type of leather and the leather that I'm gonna be talking about today for all three of these brands is embossed leather. Embossed leather is when you have a piece of leather that is either already natural full grain leather, or it is corrected grain leather, which I'm gonna get into in a second. And then the leather is embossed with a grained pattern. For instance, YSL pebble leather or the grain de poudre leather is very uniform. All the grains are fairly similar in size and shape and in placement. And this is done on purpose. It's supposed to provide a uniform, clean look that YSL is known for. In direct contrast, coach pebble leather is actually a little bit more random looking, it's sporadic, and this is done also on purpose. It's to try to imitate, imitate in a way what Coach Natural Pebble Leather used to be, which was 
natural tumble leather and now it is embossed completely. The thing is, and then one of the big differences in quality and what shows quality of an item, a leather item, is what type of leather the embossing is laid upon in the first place. Because there are a few different types of leather too and we're going to be discussing three different types of leather today. We're going to be discussing full grain leather, top grain or corrected leather, and then genuine leather. And each of these items is a different type of leather. Chanel is full grain leather. This is the purest form of leather, the most expensive form of leather, and also the highest quality of leather because full grain leather, you cannot hide imperfections because the animal skin is not changed in any way. It's not sanded down in any way. Even if it's embossed, you're embossing on top of the natural animal skin grain. So you're going to get the veins and bumps and minor imperfections that come with the animal hide. That's one of the reasons why full grain leather and items made in full grain leather is priced so high. It's because it is the upper echelon, highest quality animal hide that you can get. And the animal itself has to have had no imperfections or very minor imperfections on the hide itself. So when you have a hide that is not very good quality, you're not going to be using the full grain leather of this hide. You're probably going to use top grain leather or sanded corrected leather, or you're going to be splitting the leather completely and using genuine leather, which is a separate thing. I'm going to do my best, by the way, to like explain as concisely and clearly as possible. I'm also going to link some references down below for you, and I apologize if there's noise in the background. They're blowing outside, and I really wanted to get this video out, so I'm gonna do my best to talk around the leaf blowing, but just, just so you know. So once again, full grain leather is the highest tier of leather. It is the most expensive leather because the hide has to have as few imperfections as possible in order for you to see the, the natural skin. And smooth full grain leather is one of the most difficult and most expensive leathers to come across. Chanel lambskin is smooth full grain leather, and I'll get into that more when I do a dedicated video about Chanel lambskin, which I would love to do. Let me know if you're interested. But just so you know, Chanel bags are made with full grain, high quality leather. The next layer of leather and YSL's leather is top grain or corrected leather. Now YSL still uses very, very high quality leather for all of their animal products, all of their hides, but they tend to use at least, at least for their grain de poudre leather. This is not what I'm talking about for their smooth or their crumpled leathers, but for their grain de poudre leather, they do use top grain leather, corrected leather, which is essentially leather that is sanded down slightly. So you get rid of the natural texture of the leather so you can boss it a little bit easier for a more uniform look. YSL has to do this because in order for them to achieve the uniform grain de poudre embossing that they like on their bags and that people expect to see, they need to have a uniform surface to start with, which is why they use corrected top grain leather. Now YSL does not sand down their leather a lot and they start with very, very high quality hides in the beginning, so they don't have to sand very much down in order to achieve their corrected grain so they can boss on top of it, but it is slightly lower quality than full grain leather, and the structure is also slightly weakened. That means that when you sand down leather and you make it, you know, thinner, the structure and the integrity of the leather itself is more weakened in general, and that is one of the reasons why it's considered slightly lesser quality. It's not as durable. Finally, with modern day coach pebble leather, we have also corrected grain leather, or split leather or genuine leather. There's a couple of different ways that they basically say the same thing. But anytime you see genuine leather, that's not really a good thing anymore. Genuine leather used to mean a completely different thing than it does now. Back in the day when Coach was in its heyday, genuine leather meant full grain leather. It meant the same high quality leather that Chanel currently uses. Nowadays, Coach uses split leather or genuine leather. And split leather is essentially the layer underneath the full grain and top grain leather. So when you have a piece of leather, it can start out as about a centimeter thick. In order for it to be more pliable and used on most items, it has to be cut in half. The top layer is what ends up being the full grain or top grain leather. The lower layer and the less high quality leather is the split grain leather. It's the second type of leather. And that is what coach bags are made of. Split grain leather does not have any sort of texture naturally to it at all because the top most layers of the textured leather have been removed. So Coast is completely mechanically embossed for essentially all of its leathers, I believe. All of the modern day coach leather is not top grain or full grain. It is all mechanically embossed. So when you see a coach bag, the pebbling on the coach bag is not natural and never has been natural because it never was 
a leather that contained a texture in the first place. This is not to say that your modern day coach bag is poor quality, but it is definitely lesser quality than certain luxury brands like Chanel and YSL, and that makes sense because the price point certainly matches. It also means that the bag is probably less likely to wear as well over time. Because it is a thinner leather, it has less stability and structure, and because it has been embossed on top, that also weakens the integrity of the leather for a leather that has already got a weakened integrity. So nowadays coach bags, they kind of get beat up a little bit easier and they get beat up a little bit faster than vintage coach bags used to. And again, I'd love to mention this in a whole video about vintage versus modern day coach. But in terms of comparing say coach and Chanel pebble leather, the Chanel weather is going to last for years and years and years longer if taken care of properly than a coach bag will just because the integrity of the leather is already much weaker on the coach bag. So the leather itself is just much more likely to succumb to age sooner than Chanel caviar. But let's talk a little bit more in depth about the pebbling itself. So now that we've covered the actual type of leather that goes into the bags, we're gonna talk about the actual pebbling process. Now, because coach pebble leather and YSL grained leather are laid on top of a smooth leather base, they are going to have a different finish completely than a Chanel caviar leather does. And one of the ways that you can test this for yourself at home is with this little guy. This is a jeweler's loop. Now I use jeweler's loops or I used to start, I started out with using this loop for jewelry, for diamonds, precious metals, precious stones, because it is a regulation jeweler's loop with 10 times magnification. And let's just show you here, uh, right side up. And this is what it looks like swiveled out. You can see it magnifies very nicely. And you can use one of these. They're not very expensive. I think I got this for $30 for a, a very good quality one, but you can get them for as little as like $15 or $10, honestly. You just want the magnification, especially if you're not serious about it to start with. So you can use a jeweler's loop to actually observe the cranes under magnification to see the different kinds of embossing that has been done. And it's super cool, or at least I think it's super cool because I am a nerd as has been well established. So what I did is I took some pictures using my loop that I'm going to pop up here as I explain to you a little bit more about the pebbling of each bag and showing you the different ways that you can see and ascertain quality in the grains of your leather item. So we're gonna first start with coach. And as you can see from the examples I'm showing on the screen here, you can see that the pebbling is actually not uniform. And this was done on purpose. It was done in order to, as I said before, I believe, imitate natural grain leather, natural pebbling that the coach bags do not currently possess. And one of the ways that you can tell that this is pure embossing on a smooth split or sanded grain leather, a corrected grain, is because there is no differences in the texture underneath the embossing. The same thing with the YSL. As you can see from the YSL bags, they're all very uniform, not in the same way that the coach bag was. The coach was more randomized looking. The YSL bag was much more uniform in grain, but you can see from the graining of the YSL bag that there's no underlying texture. The only texture is the embossing that you can see. And you can even see in the YSL pictures that there are little round like dots on top of the, the grain itself. And that is from the embossing and also potentially from the pigment that was laid down to color the bag. In direct contrast from the Chanel up close pictures, not only can you see the embossing on top, but you can also see little divots and dips and dapples in the leather itself. This shows that the caviar leather was embossed on top of full grain leather, a natural hide that already had imperfections and signs of life. This shows in the most concrete way possible that this leather came from an actual animal. It has natural changes and shifts in the skin, pores in the skin that the other leathers do not possess. As I mentioned earlier, full grain leather is the most expensive, highest quality leather that you can get. And you can see that even though the caviar leather has an embossing on top of this full grain leather, the leather itself still looks pretty smooth by all appearances. There aren't big nicks and dings, there aren't any scar marks on this leather. And that's again, because this was from a top quality hide. Another thing I want to touch on briefly, I'm not gonna go into detail about it today because this was mostly just on the caviar leather itself and giving you a brief overview about the different types of leathers, is that Chanel and YSL use the vegetable tanning method while Coach has always used a chrome tanning method. As a side note, chrome tanning is much more harmful to the environment. It uses a cocktail of minerals and chemicals to tan the leather over a period of about a day. And vegetable tanning is much more expensive because it can take up to several months in order to properly tan the, the animal hide but they do use different tanning methods. And I believe that Coach started to take steps 
recently to move some of their production to being vegetable tanned, but I don't think it's all of it. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, when I started looking into this for getting more information, getting concrete information about these items and these brands, Coach ultimately had the least amount to say. I asked several different representatives the same questions and all of them only were able to give me information that was already found on the website, which I could find myself. And in most cases, I was more knowledgeable about Coach because I already knew about Vintage Coach and I've been researching for so long. The representatives really didn't know much. All they could really say was, oh, it's glove tanned leather, but they couldn't tell me what type of tanning process was used, chrome or vegetable. And glove tanning, isn't actually a thing anymore. Like it's it's a blanket like term. It's like saying green. Like if it's green, it's it's got a green sticker on it, but that doesn't actually tell you anything about the product and how good it is and how beneficial it is. Glove tan is the same way for coach. Like glove tanning used to mean something and now it doesn't mean anything at all really. So when they're saying glove tan genuine leather, they're saying fluff it's genuine leather. And genuine leather is actually one of the worst types of leather quality you can get. And in some places in the world, it's illegal to actually call genuine leather leather because it's plasticized so much. But I'm getting off track. That's a little different video. Uh, the bottom line is Coach, YSL, and Chanel use different tanning methods and also different dyeing methods in order to get their leather tanned and dyed the appropriate colors and the appropriate quality and consistency of their bags, which is a completely separate video too. And as I said, I have a lot of different ideas for this Let's Talk Leather little series that I'm planning on doing. So if you have any suggestions of what you would like to see or what you would like me to talk about, or if you also have any suggestions about how I talked in this video, like if you think that I could have been clearer or if you think that I should have touched on more things for longer or in more detail, also please feel free to let me know. This was a pretty base comparison. I just wanted to show you some up close pictures and detail shots of the leathers up close so you could see the grains and really see some differences in quality between an incredibly expensive, very high tier level, a pretty expensive, moderate tier leather and a very affordable, lesser tier leather, all things considered. I would certainly say that Vintage Coach is very high tier. Modern Day Coach, a little less so, but that, that is also partially opinion. If you think that your Coach bag is great quality, I'm certainly not knocking it. And I think that some of their designs are beautiful and certainly some of their leathers are beautiful. It's just in terms of the leather that they actually use, the processes they actually use, there's a pretty big difference. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was a little bit convoluted. I'm a little bit learning as I go how I want to present these facts and in what way I'm going to be presenting this fact. So this video was kind of like a first start learning experience, but I hope that it was interesting to you and I hope that it was helpful. If you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.